Hello and welcome back. Today's video is going to be about reasons why you might have failed your makeup low buy or no buy. Now this video is not meant to be mean or call people out or anything like that, but I've done a lot of reflections over the years and there have been times where I have tried low buys and no buys and it was a total fail. However, for all of 2019, I was on a low buy beauty budget that year and it went really, really well. And then this year I've been on a different low buy that is restricting the amount of products that I can buy. And again, it's going very, very well. So I've reflected on other times where I did try a low buy or a no buy and it totally, totally failed. So if you're having a hard time doing a low buy or a no buy, these are maybe some things to think about and maybe considering if you know if you're doing these or not you know just something to try out if you do want to see other no buy low buy videos check out my makeup and consumerism playlist i have tons of other low buy tips videos there and also that's where my current low buy intro and then my monthly updates that is all in that playlist so if you do want to see that check that out and let's get started All right, reason number one that you may have failed, this may sound kind of weird, but it could be that you didn't actually need to be on a no buy or a low buy. And I say this because this has been a big trend in the last few years on YouTube and Instagram. People have been doing no buys and low buys, which I think is absolutely great that we are cautious with what we purchase and don't overspend, but it may not be for everyone. Not everybody needs to do it. All of 2020, I wasn't on a low buy and I don't think it was a problem for me at all. And like I said, 2019 and this year, I am on a low buy and I really wanted to do it. But last year, I didn't wanna do it and I didn't. And I think that is okay. I don't think we all have to you know, say we're never gonna buy makeup again or anything like that. So just think about it. Maybe it's not right for you or maybe you tried a no buy and it didn't work. Maybe try a low buy instead. So just something to consider just because everybody else is doing this online you know it, it's not for everybody and I think that that's okay I think we just need to do what works best for us as individuals all right reason number two this is a big one that perhaps is why you failed at a low buy or no buy and that is if you did not look inside and see what is the reason for your excessive shopping now this sounds kind of deep but for some people, maybe it is. And I know that for me, a big thing that has caused me to shop excessively in the past is stress. I will shop for stress relief and not a great thing to do. Obviously there are better tactics out there to deal with stress. Um, and for some people it may be boredom or anxiety or you know maybe other things, but I think we have to look introspectively a little bit and see what are the reasons that we're shopping excessively because this may be the number one thing to do if you do feel like you have a shopping problem, which again, only you can determine if you have a shopping problem or not. If you failed at this in the past, maybe you did not look inside and see what is the reason for it. So I think this one is very, very important. This next one I think is a big reason too that sometimes people fail at low buys or no buys and that is because they have not set a proper motivation or goal. I think you have to know why are you doing this? Why do you wanna go on a no buy or a low buy? What are your reasons? Because it's much easier to achieve something if you have a specific goal in mind. I think it really helps to know your motivation. For my low buy in 2019, which was a beauty budget where I was controlling how much I spent, my reasons were pretty clear behind that. I wanted to save money. We had bought a house in 2018, so 2019, I really wanted to save money because I had spent so much the year before. Simple as that. Knowing my motivation really helped me stick to it. This year on my low buy, my motivation is different. Sure, I wanna save money too, but that's not my primary goal. My primary goal is that I don't wanna really increase the size of my makeup collection because last year, I wasn't on a low buy and I did buy quite a bit of makeup, so I want to enjoy that makeup instead of still buying that much, if that makes sense. I don't really want to increase the size of my collection too much this year. I've been working on decluttering a lot as well. So having that very clear goal in mind really, really helps. I think knowing your motivation is crucial and it makes it much easier to achieve your goals, whatever they may be, whether it's a low buy or you know something else in life. I think knowing your goals and setting that to maybe write it down, 
I think this is really, really important. This next reason I think may also be a reason that a lot of times people do fail at low buys and no buys, and that is not changing your mindset. This is something I really did at the beginning of this year when I started this low buy journey. I wanted to completely change my mindset, change how I think about makeup, change how I think about buying makeup. This was really, really important to me. If I see a new product coming out, I need to either look in my collection and find something similar or just think about something else. I think I was thinking about makeup so much that I needed to change my mindset. I needed to watch less YouTube videos about makeup. I started watching, you know, more other random things as well. I think changing your mindset is very, very important. If you say, yeah, I wanna go on a low buy, but you don't change anything else and you keep going with your thinking the same way that it has been, it may not be very successful. So I think changing your mindset, trying to think of other things to just distract yourself, that's a big thing for me. You know, think about something else, distract yourself. Try not to think about makeup all the time if you notice that that is something that you're doing, which leads you to shop more. I think this one is really, really important. All right, and the last reason I think a lot of people may fail at low buys and no buys is that they're not changing their daily habits. And this is something I really did this year and it really, really helped me. So think about if on a daily basis, let's say whenever you go to the grocery store, which I know that I used to do this and I still do it some, but I've really cut down is going to the grocery store, every grocery store I've ever been to has like makeup aisles. I would always go walk down those aisles before I went to buy my groceries or afterwards on my way to the checkout counter. Always went through those aisles. This year, I started avoiding it. I go to Target and I'm like, no, I am not here for makeup. I'm here to buy some pasta, go over there and buy that. And I've just been skipping over the makeup aisles. I still check them out from time to time, but I gotta say, this has really, really helped me. I used to walk through there every single time I was in a grocery store or a Target or wherever, and I just stopped doing that. And also, I gotta say, this also saves me time at the store now because half the time grocery shopping, I'd spend looking at makeup, which is pretty silly if you think about it. There may be other daily habits that we have that may promote us to shop more, such as the type of YouTube content that we watch. You know, if you're watching a lot of Sephora hauls or if every day you tend to open the Sephora or the Ulta app and look through those or scrolling through Instagram, change those daily habits do something different maybe delete the apps off your phone so you're not even tempted to scroll through those on a daily basis these daily things that we do i think make a big difference so just watch what are you doing on a daily basis that causes you to shop and just try not to do that anymore now easier said than done because i've noticed if there's things that i kind of do on a regular basis like i don't even realize that i'm doing them like like the whole walking through the makeup aisle at the grocery store. It became a subconscious thing for me. For years I've done that and I didn't even really think about it until at the beginning of this year, just kind of realizing that is just what I tend to do. I walk into the store and I walk through the makeup aisles and then I go about the rest of my shopping. It tends to become a bit of a subconscious thing and we don't even realize that we're doing it. So it's pretty interesting, but just something to think about if these kind of daily things that it becomes a habit and you don't even realize that you're doing it. So yeah, I mean, it's like biting your nails. It becomes a subconscious thing. So really think about these little things that you may do on an everyday basis that perhaps you need to eliminate. Alrighty, that is it for this video. Just something to think about. I know that for sure in the past when I've tried low buys or no buys and I totally failed, it was because I did not do these things. And since I have done these things, like I said, this year my low buy it is so successful I mean it's even more successful than my low buy in 2019 because I've bought even less makeup than I did at that time so you know it's going really well but that's because I've really focused changed my mindset looked at these things that I had done in the past and really evaluated why maybe I did fail at low buys in the past so yeah that is it for this video let us know if you have some other tips and tricks and if you want to see other low buy related videos check out my makeup and consumerism playlist I will link that that is it thank you so much for watching and have a great day